Hey folks, welcome to the Ask Sabado channel. I'm Sabado, your host, and today I'd like to just talk to you about something fairly simple and straightforward. It's really how I became a better person uh, as a result of my retirement. Um, I never would have imagined that retiring would have uh, as profound an impact uh, as it has. Uh, when I retired, my idea was I'm not going to be working anymore, and I don't have to get up in the morning and, and go deal with politics and drama and just having the requirements of getting up and going to work. But I never thought uh, in a million years that it would it would really change who I am uh, for the better as, as a human being. So today I'd like to just walk you through uh, a little bit through that journey. Um, so uh, just a little bit about me. Again, I'm, I'm Sabado. I uh, retired at the age of 51. And uh, I was fortunate enough to, to retire early. My wife also retired, so we had retired about three months apart. She did before me because she was a test run. And I'll tell you, I haven't looked back ever since. And so uh, this channel here really is an opportunity for me to share my story with you. And so that's, that's what we're going to do. So let's, let's go ahead and get into it. So the, the first thing that I think retirement has done for me personally in, in terms of my own journey is it's it's given me a lot more time for reflection and personal growth. Um, when I was working, I was, you know, just like the rest of us, I was in the rat race, going into work, um, going in probably at seven, eight, nine, and working and, uh, until six, seven. And, you know, there's always the work when you get home. You know, when I, when I got out of school, I, I thought the days of homework were gone and they weren't. And so, you know, year after year after year, and, and I did a lot of traveling, so I didn't have a lot of time to focus on a lot of a lot of different things. And any personal growth or development that I was doing uh, was really work related. And so, when work is gone, uh, does that growth go with you? And so, that's it, it became a, a habit uh, for me to try to find a uh, to, you know to try to be a better person year over year. Um, what does that look like? Each year it's different. Uh, one year, for example. I uh, had told my boss that I was going to read a book a month. And so I started reading a book a month and he started reading a book a month and, you know, just, just different types of things. But, you know, now what I'm, what I'm finding is that I'm not running from one task to the next and I could, I could really focus on, on my own self-awareness. Uh, you know, it's funny, I, I talk in another video about how I felt like my whole life I was just kind of this average guy doing average things and, and trying to make an average contribution to the world while trying to uplift the human condition. Uh, but I, I also learned that one of the biggest challenges that we probably have as people uh, are understanding the impact that we have on others. Uh, sometimes when you say the wrong thing, it impacts people a certain way, even if you don't mean anything by it. Sometimes by not saying anything. Um, it, it has an impact. You know, I, I, it was interesting. I was talking to an old friend of mine uh, last week and we were talking about uh, we we're talking about playing golf. And he says, you know, when you get uh, when you hit bad shots, you really get frustrated. I said, well, what makes you say that? He says, because you don't say anything. And I said to, it was funny because as I as I thought about that, I realized that I didn't say anything because I didn't want to convey how frustrated I was to take and I didn't want to take away from everybody else's enjoyment. But other people were taking cues based on the fact that I didn't say anything. And I, I, I realized that that may have been the case in certain circumstances, but I didn't, certainly didn't think that was the case when I was playing golf. But, you know, I think now I'm starting to understand that um, our behaviors, uh, whether intended or not, are, are impacting other people. And so I, I think that the learning here is always understand the impact that you have on other people. Um, and I, I think my what I'll call my uh, emotional intelligence quotient has gotten better. Uh, just, you know, approaching things from the position of, of empathy and understanding. You know, I, I think based on what I've done and again, my my formal training is in human resources. I did that for a lot of years and I um, was always focused on solving people's problems. So people came to me and they say, hey, Sabado, look, I got a problem. Um, and then I was able to solve it. Um, Kind of like Vanilla Ice, you know, bring me a problem, yo, I'll solve it. <laughs> Just kidding. But I would I would try to solve the problem and not necessarily think about it because I go into the automatic mode and, and I realize that, you know, a lot of times, you know, I might come up with the with a solution, 
But what people really look for in a lot of situations is just empathy and understanding. And, and, and what I've started to really focus on, uh, as opposed to trying to get these tasks done or solve these problems, is, is really switch gears and focus a lot more on, on just empathy and understanding. Because I, you know, it's funny, not every problem is meant to be solved. And that, that sounds like an oxymoron, um, but it's 100% true. And so, but I've been able, I've had the bandwidth and the time uh, to focus on that, to focus on uh, just being a better friend and, and understanding where they're coming from, understanding why people do some of the things they do, understanding how the situation came about. Because without understanding that, you really don't necessarily have uh, the full context of the circumstance. You know, there's a good reason for people to do bad things because they're looking for a positive outcome. Um, and I use the example of the difference between somebody who steals a candy bar just for the thrill of stealing candy bar and the person who's in poverty who steals a candy bar because that's a mechanism for them to feed their family. And so is the person that steals their fat, that candy bar for their family, uh, is that a different context and does that add a different uh, complexion to the situation? 100%. And so I, I try to approach every situation like that. And I don't think if I was still working, I would have looked at the world that way. I would have continued to try to solve problems. And anybody that knows me knows that I solve problems. I, I used to make the joke that uh, people don't call me for uh, happy, happy, joy, joy, uh, heartfelt types of interactions. They call because they've got a problem and they want to solve or they want to think through something or they want to figure something out. And so, you know, when I, when I look at my... my um, when I look at what retirement's afforded me to do is, is really just in terms of, you know, that type of growth and reflection to the opportunity to, uh, you know, just to continue to, I'm sorry, I'm having some technical difficulty to focus on, on those areas. And number two, um, I've strengthened my relationships. Um, one of the things that you get with the gift of time um, and time is a gift because remember, time is your only non-renewable resource. You can get more money, you can get another job, you can get any other material thing that you want if you're willing to do what it takes to get it, but you can't get time back. And so with that gift of time, um, I've really been able to, to focus and spend the time that I need to strengthen my relationships. Um, my relationship with my wife is, is a hundredfold better because we've, not because it was ever bad, but because every day we have a routine. We, we do kind of our thing during the day. I play golf, I'll fix something, I'll run errands, I'll do whatever it is that I do. She'll do whatever it is that she needs to do. And usually about four or five o'clock, we make it a point to sit down, just make dinner, watch TV, and, and hang out and just tell stories and just, you know, just love each other. We don't, uh, it's, it's hard sometimes uh, because you get so caught up in the mix. I used to get so caught up in the mix. And when you're in a, when you're in a function like human resources, what you really do, if you, if you really care about what you're doing, you're really taking the weight of your organization, putting it on your shoulders, and you're trying to make it a better place. Although people don't feel like that most of the time. I mean, I don't, I don't think there are many people that have uh, written home uh, about the HR guy. I mean, it's just just the way it is, or the HR person. And so uh, it's just not the case. It's like, uh, you know, HR is like internal affairs in, on, in the Law & Order TV show. And when they walk in the room, you know there's a problem. When HR walks in the room, people start to look and say, well, why is HR here? A lot of times we're helping one party and another party may be seeing something else happen. And it's not all about disciplinary actions and stuff like that. But either way, when you're in a, when you're in a position where you set policy for organizations, different people are going to feel different ways. Um, and so we would come home and we'd have all of that weight on our shoulders because she did similar types of work. And so we were so busy decompressing that we didn't really just have time to, to just spend. And so now, you know, we have this incredible amount of time just to spend with each other and our interactions are deeper. And my interactions with my friends are a lot deeper because instead of having a conversation, rush, rushing off to the next conversation, because I want to get all of these conversations in so I don't lose total touch with people, um, I have the opportunity to step back, try to understand, try to 
see where they're coming from and really help them in, in their circumstances with, with a meaningful connection. Um, the third thing that I has happened as once I retired is I was able to get more involved in my community. Um, I'm at one time I was the um, president of the homeowners association at a, at a place that I lived and that was more like a job and I would come in because again I was used to solving setting policy, solving problems, being direct and moving through things. Uh, but what's what's happened uh, since I retired, is I'm really able to get deeper into the organization and I'm sorry, into the HOA. And I, what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm actually on what's called the Architectural Review Committee. So when people want to make changes to their property uh, they, uh, that are required, uh, that require approval by the, by the board, I'm on the committee that helps approve and, and vet those. And, but what it does is it connects me not just to the people on the committee, but the rest of the folks in the community. Because uh, on that committee, my, my goal isn't to tell people what they can do, but to help them with pathways to get from what they may want to do to where it is that they, that they want to get to. And it's just, it's incredible because I'm, uh, I'm able to see what's going on around the community. I'm able to interact with different community members. I'm able to interact with folks from the management companies. Uh, I'm able to, uh, I've met the board and spent time with the board. And in fact, um, maybe we'll have a party for me. Yay, yay, you know, round of applause. But I was just named the, um, the, the chair of the Architectural Review Committee. Not a, not a huge, huge uh, deal, but it's for a, vo uh, a volunteer type of situation. But the fact that I have the time to, to put in 100% commitment and the fact that I'm I've established myself as a leader in the group. Folks are uh, happy with the fact that I'm there, and and you know rewarded me with with making me the the chair of, of that committee, and so I, I have the ability to really drive positive change in my community. And so when I look around the community, I say you know being one of the nicer communities in town, I'm able to say you know I have a piece of that, and I'm able to help people, and I've become a resource for for folks around the community to help them solve their problem as opposed to, or to, to meet their goals for the beautification of their, of their property as opposed to um, um, just saying no. And uh, so I, that, that enhancement of the community and, and gay involvement, I, I think is, has helped me broaden my viewpoint because I'm, I'm now, I feel more connected uh, to the world around me. And if I wanna uplift the human condition, the more connections that I have in the world, the better off it is. Um, so the next, the other thing, another area that I, I think retirement has helped make me a better person is um, it's given me more time to exercise. Uh, I One of the first things I did is uh, I went to the CDC and I said, what are the guidelines? And they say um, 100 and I think it's 160 minutes or 130 minutes, 100, I think it's 160 minutes of um vigorous exercise, 150 minutes of vigorous exercise per week. And um, so my question was, how am I going to do that? And when I was working, I was exercising, but I would have to push to, to make time. So now I I could embed exercise in, in the things that I do. I, I think I've mentioned in other videos, um, I play golf once or twice a week, and that gives me the opportunity to walk golf courses. Um, and, and that walk is usually about uh, six miles. Uh, it might be five miles if I hit them straight, but that's just, I don't think that's in the cards uh, for me at this point. Uh, but maybe I'll get to that retired golf and, and straight and straight down the fairway. But, uh, but it, it's given me time to, to exercise. It's, I've, I've started to eat better, um, eating at home more, more whole foods, um, and just generally taking care of myself uh, mentally and physically. I think when you when you look at your health you it's it's about having balance and in, in your in your routine whether it's your workout routine your mental health routine um as opposed to trying to get a million things done in one day or in, in one hour I, I have time i have a nice community i think in some of my shorts you've probably seen the lake behind my house so i'm able to go out to that lake it has a walking trail so i could go out and walk that's about three miles or so uh, but it's it's funny because as i've exercised more uh, that's helped my disposition and it's helped my, my health outcomes uh, improve with my, my blood pressure being low and not having to take any medications. And the fact that 
I tend to pride myself on the fact that at my age, I'm not on any uh, regular medication. And that, and part of that is because of the lifestyle I'm able to lead. And part of how my lifestyle has continued to improve was, was through retirement. And so, you know, I think just overall, I'm a lot more balanced, um, a lot more energetic and, and just, just happier. I'm just happy most of the time. And I'm, I, and I think one of the other pieces of that is what helps with the mental health is I think the, the friends that I've made are friends that don't fit a time schedule, uh, but they're friends that, uh, that get me, that I get, that we can have fun with and we can talk and just enjoy life, life together with. And so when you have all of those working together, it's, it's an incredible, incredible experience. And so, and I attribute that partially to the fact that I have the capacity or the freedom to, uh, to do different things at, at different times and, and, and learn from different people. So, um, the, the next one is I, I think overall, when I, when I, when I look at it, I just have a greater appreciation for life just overall. Um, I, I used to, it's, it's, when I look at social media, I see all the big stuff. I see all the people that show all the big stuff, all the great things, all the big things, all the shiny things, all the things that are grandiose. And, and because I think that's what all, that's all that people have time for is if it's not hard hitting, I don't have time for it. And I had a, uh, the other day, yesterday, and if I can, if I could figure it out, I'll put a picture up, but my wife took a picture of me in my garden. And uh, you know, it, it's funny because I'm six foot eight, so when I go into my garden, you see that I get lost in the garden. And when I'm in the garden, I'm not, you know, I'm looking at my vegetables, so I'm not, I'm not gonna front. I'm looking at my vegetables, and I'm looking at how things are growing, and I'm looking at my irrigation system. But what I spend my time on is I'm, I'm looking at the spiders and the, and the nice, intricate, the cool, intricate webs that they have. Uh, I'm looking at the bees. One of the things I'm really um, focused on right now is the bee population. It's, it's, I know it sounds strange, but bees are critical for the pollination of different plants. And so the fact that I've got spaghetti squash and summer squash and watermelon um, out there, and I, those are heavy, and cucumbers, those are all heavy pollinators. And so the fact that you have, I have bees out there, it helps pollinate because if you don't have the bees, you don't have the pollination and you don't grow the vegetables. And so I, I spend a lot of time playing with the bees or, or looking at the bees. Uh, the hummingbirds, the hummingbirds come in. I have, I have a few salvia plants that the hummingbirds come into. And uh, they have the, I have the salvias, I have sage salvias that, that harness bees. I have the other kind of, a couple other kind of salvias where they, where they, with the long flutes so they could they stick their uh, beaks in and, and eat the pollen or drink the pollen or whatever the case whatever whatever hummingbirds do if they lick the pollen let me know if you know what hummingbirds do on a plant but and it's just great because i just stand there and i look or i look out at the lake and i'll see the fish jumping or i'll see the hawks in the sky but the point being is that it's just the little things i go outside and just smell the air um they're building a park next door to my house i could see the construction on the park I see my neighbors walking through the park and they look at my garden and comment on the garden and say hello almost every morning. So it's, you know, but again, it's just this, this, this zest for life, this, this appreciation for the world around us. And when I, I, it wasn't until I had the time to really spend the time to think about that, did I do that to the degree that I'm doing. Now, I, I think ultimately I've always considered myself incredibly fortunate. Um, the fact that I've been able to succeed and achieve the things that I've achieved in life and experience the things that I have, I am incredibly fortunate. Um, you know, it's not without a couple of hardships from time to time, but uh, there's a lot of people that uh, would look at uh, my life and wish that uh, it, their life was mine as opposed to theirs. So I've always appreciated, but it's just a, a, a more, a bigger, a deeper sense of, of gratitude for everything that I have. And, and you know, I'm, I'm just more mindful now. Um, I think about how things not just impact me or those immediately in the circle, but how do they impact the bigger picture? Um, living in the moment, because I don't have to be anywhere, um, I just focus on what am I doing? What am I doing right now? It's funny because we have, uh, so, as a kind of talking about living in the moment and, and I'm using this as an excuse. So if my wife happens to see this video, 
um, I could I could put the excuse out there and and I could say, well, just go out and ask the internet and see what they say. Is uh, so we have a garbage disposal and the garbage disposal has one of those buttons that pushes on the countertop, and so it it got to the point where I think it wore out. So you push it, and it might stay on or it may not go off, and it's just intermittent. So I went to Lowe's a couple of weeks ago, and actually I think over this last weekend, and just bought the the unit that has the button on it so I could change the button. So that button's been sitting on the counter for about a week, and I told myself that today I was going to do that. But because other things came up and I had to handle some other situations, I, I didn't get to it. But that's okay, because under normal circumstances, I would have been put myself under this inordinate pressure to get it done. But I didn't need to, because the things that I did were important. The garbage disposal is not going to explode. It's not going to hurt anybody. And it, you can still get it to run so it won't stink. But uh, it's, I'll just do it tomorrow or the following day and, and get it done. It's, it's not going to be any harm or, or any foul. So really just living in the moment, enjoying what's in front of me and, and doing those things have, have really helped build and helped me drive that, that deep sense of, of uh, appreciation and gratitude for, for things. And, and I don't think I would have had that if I were working because I would have had a very limited amount of time. Um, to do that so you know and, and again when you when you think about work you know, you're thinking of a 24-hour day and you're thinking of 10 hours at work then you're thinking about eight hours of, of sleeping and so that's you know that's only going to give you uh, six hours to, to do anything that you need to do which is which you know when you when you really put that in perspective that's that's not really a lot considering you have to commute to work considering everything that, that goes around that um, the other thing that I've, I've been able to do is I've, I've rediscovered some, some passions that I've had. And for those of you that know, I, I, music is my thing. I, I love music. And the one thing I always wanted to do was I, I always wanted to play an instrument. I, I always thought playing an instrument was, was the coolest thing, and it was the piano. I think when you, when you look at people like Scott Storch, for example, who produced a lot of the hip-hop songs for, let's say, Dr. Dre and so on, and hearing him play on the piano, I always wanted to do that. So I was able to, to buy myself a, a piano keyboard and teach myself a uh, piano. I haven't played in a, in a little bit of time because other things have come up. Uh, the other thing I'm, I'm looking at is uh, we have a master gardener program. And so there's a big university in town and there's a master gardener program. So you don't just put things in the ground and grow. But it'll teach you things like, or teach me things like soil composition, uh, temperature, pH, all of the science behind growing things in the garden. And not only does it allow that for me to learn that, but it, it puts me in a position to be able to teach others. So I could teach kids about growing their own food. Uh, I could go to my mother. My mother lives in a retirement community, uh, 55 and older community. And so, at, and it's funny because at 80 years old, she's one of the younger people in her community. And so it gives me the opportunity to go there and teach others how to garden because I really, I, it won't, I won't be lucky or I won't just be the guy that has some big cucumbers. I'll be the guy that knows what he's doing. And it's funny because a lot of, uh, it's, it's not going to be in that Master Gardener program. It's, it's a lot of other retired people and, and most retired people are significantly, significantly older than I am. And so it gives me an opportunity to do that. And, and teaching, I, I enjoy teaching. I enjoy helping people. I enjoy being a resource for people. And I, you know, I just, I was thinking this morning, I just, I just enjoy making friends. And so um, it, it gives me the opportunity to, to, to really rediscover and, and dig deeper um, into, um, into some of those, some of those areas. Um, and then, you know, the other thing you start thinking about when you see yourself as, as an average person and you see yourself as I just, as I, as, as Tupac once said, I'm just a black man caught up in the mix. Um, it's, it's, you don't see yourself as somebody who's able to really impact directly the quality of people's lives going forward in a way that like, like a Martin Luther King did or, um, you know, others, you know, have. And, but there's, but I'm starting to see that there's a value in in sharing experiences, and so I and, and and the mentorship and the legacy. You know, one of the things that I talk about on this channel is the fact that I've had the opportunity 
and and uh, been put in a position to where I'm able to retire early. And there's a lot of people that have never had a bank account. And part of the reason they've never had a bank account is because nobody's ever told them how to open a bank account. And so part of this channel is designed for a few things. One, to help inspire people to retire early. I, I really think we get caught and we get institutionalized in the work and we do, there are self-defeating behaviors that we do uh, that keep us working longer than we should. Uh, it's the it's the help provide inspiration to people that may not have ever thought that people of color uh, retired early uh, in the U.S. I, I see some as I've had some of these discussions. I've seen some channels where there's people of color retiring in Thailand and some other places. But if you want to retire in the U.S., you know what are the steps to do that? And so to to help people that way, and then just to bring awareness to the fact that we uh, have an obligation to ourselves uh, to live our best lives. I, I think Because I think if we all do that, then we find ourselves in the, in the right side of where we want to be. And it's, it's, it's not up to me to tell you what that is, but it's up to me to share my story. So if there are pieces of my story that resonate with you, uh, then we can have follow-up discussions about the detail of those, of those components of, of my uh, journey, or uh, or you are able to see that something is possible. And until something is seen as being possible, it's not possible. And, and so I want to try to get, help people understand that that more is, is possible. And so you so when you I start thinking about my my legacy, and I start thinking about what's the stamp that I'm going to have on the world, and I and I start thinking about who I am, all things that became possible to think about because I have the capacity, because I'm not going in uh, to work every day uh, dealing with all of that. It's just, it's a powerful, powerful, powerful place to be. And the thought of that is a humbling experience because I, you know, I still see myself as a, as a kid from the east side that um, got into a lot of trouble and, and barely made it out and, and started to do some good things. And so if I could take somebody else that, um, that, in that same circumstance, then I've really done what it is that I think, you know, I'm put here to do. And so focusing on that. And so, you know, so I, you know, so those are, those are seven things that, and I'll go back through them, uh, seven ways that retirement has, has made me a better person. Uh, it, it, it's given me more time for reflection and personal growth. Um, you know, it's, I've strengthened my relationships as a result of having more time. I've become in, uh, more deeply enhanced in, in community involvement. Um, I'm living a healthier lifestyle. Uh, I have a greater appreciation for life as a whole. Um, I've rediscovered some passions. And I started thinking about my legacy as a person. And, um, and again, a lot of that is why I'm doing this channel. It's uh, I'm, I'm not on this channel. You know, it's funny. I, I watch uh, YouTube videos about YouTube videos and a lot of it's about monetization and all of these types of things. And I told my wife yesterday that uh, now that I've hit uh, 300 subscribers, it, it goes away from being something that's kind of hit or miss, but it really becomes a responsibility because there's 300 plus people who in some way have connected to what we're talking about. And so I have a responsibility to make sure that I provide information that's useful for people. And that tells me that somebody, there's a, there's a chance that people might be learning from this or people might be inspired. In fact, I got a comment this afternoon that said, I've watched a few of your videos and I'm inspired. And again, that's, that's incredibly humbling because I, 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 and I, and I appreciate you taking time to uh, to, to be part of the channel and, and pay attention. So, you know, if you're, if you're thinking about retiring or if you've already retired, you know, I'd love to hear some of your thoughts about what I've talked about and, and share some of your experiences uh, on the channel because it's, I know what I know and I've experienced what I've experienced, but the more that we can create community around this idea, the more people that are helped and the bigger our, uh, our reach is uh, in the rest of the world. And you just never know. There's that one person who 
hear some of this information and change their life. Um, and, and I know that for me, I could probably name five people who believed in me the right way and gave me the right kind of information that helped me get to, to where it is that, uh, that I've gotten to in, in my life. So, um, you know, so on that note, I'll just close with F you find this information helpful or useful in any way, please, uh, subscribe to the channel. And I'd also like to announce that I am now, um, on Instagram, uh, Facebook, and TikTok. I, uh, my best friend told me I'm now the old guy on TikTok. So I'm now on TikTok and it's all under the same name. It's Ask Sabado and you'll find me there. And I, I post a bunch of content there. And again, I'm, I'll never ask anybody to pay for content because, um, I, I think the, you know, there's too much, the need is too big and there's, and the information is too much for me to go and start charging people for this information. But I suggest engaging on, on one of those, whichever one you're comfortable with. I know different people are comfortable with different platforms. But at the end of the day, uh, please consider subscribing because it, you know, if nothing else, it's an indicator to me that this information is helpful for you. And I, I put out videos uh, twice a week, uh, once on Wednesday, or I'm sorry, put out long form videos twice a week, uh, once on Wednesday uh, and then once on Saturday. And then through the course of the week, I, I put out a host of shorts to, to connect to different pieces of information that we've discussed or just other experiences. So on that note, I will have a good rest of your day and I will talk to you soon.